here tonight that probably many of you have never heard in all of your life. I look at a man who has become a spiritual leader. He is only in the infancy of a ministry that would reach around the world. Though he never traveled over 500 miles, 400 miles, 200 miles in all of his journeys. But yet more books are filled in the library with his name than any other book that's ever been written. He was a man that could cause armies to surrender without firing a shot. But he looked at 12 simple, ordinary, common men. And he did something that he wants to do tonight again in this church. And it says so beautifully. Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power. And gave them power and authority over all the devils and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick he said to them take nothing for your journey neither staves nor scrip nor bread money but have two coats of these and whosoever house you enter into there abide and then depart and whatsoever house you enter into abide and then Depart. Notice that. And whosoever will not receive you when you go out of the city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed. And they went through towns preaching their doctrines. No. No. They went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Spirit. I thank you for that wonderful atmosphere of your spirit. I have that marvelous feeling within my own self. That tonight we have been gathered together as a very special flock. And we're going to be blessed. And we are going to discover that we are not defeated. But we are winners. And we have faith and believe. That God. Is able to deliver in our generation as he has done in the past. Now, Father, I believe you for that sweet anointing, that anointing of heaven. Father, thy will is done, not mine, but yours. Save the sinner. Lord, love that backslider. Fill that believer. And while you're at it, Father, heal the sick tonight in a very special manner. I claim it because I ask in the blessed names of that Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, 
and God the Holy Spirit and all of God's people said together Amen and Amen you may be seated I want to begin tonight my little talk in a very special way I'm not going to preach tonight. I did that last night. You should have been here. But I want to talk to you tonight about where you stand with God, not as a saver, not as a baptizer, not as a financial blesser, but where do you stand with Him? as your healer. You see, it's very quiet in this Presbyterian assembly tonight. Because when you really get down to the very fine print, the Christian world has laid divine healing on the shelf. It has almost become totally spiritually obsolete. And very few churches believe in the miracle power of deliverance. Now I don't know why except only this one reason. When there is healing it has a twin companion. It's called power. And might as well be frank with you, honey. The only power we have is the generator in the Hammond. The electricity through the light bulbs. And the electricity that pulls the pulleys on the air conditioning. Where is the power that he gave his disciples? I will tell you something. I do not believe that he loved the disciples any more than he loves you. I believe that we are just as important or more so than they were. But notice, he gave them power. And wherever they went preaching the gospel, healing followed them everywhere they went. I want to say something here that may sound a bit weird for a preacher to say. I am so hungry. To see the power of God's healing mercy to become vogue, popular, a necessity in every spiritual gathering. And when we think about divine healing, we say, yep, here's a young man that's being healed from gunshot wounds, from a robbery. Yeah, that's great. But there are people in this audience tonight that have wounded spirits, broken hearts, troubled minds, tortured by memories of the past. And they sit on our pews being tortured by the power of the enemy and we think well in time they'll outgrow it honey you don't have to outgrow it I believe that God is instant in season out of season he's always ready to do what we're big enough to believe him for go ahead but yet Divine healing has become one of the most controversial things in the spiritual world that we're a part of. Recently, I went to a general meeting of all of the Pentecostal brethren in St. Louis, Missouri. It was so dead 
I thought, my God, I could have gone to the Boy Scout convention and had more spirit than I feel today. And I was cornered one night by a group of ministers. And all of a sudden they begin to shoot questions at me that I could answer on instantaneous ability. And they said, Jerry B., why is it that you have great revivals? I said, the power of God. Why are so many people being saved in your meetings? The power of God. Why are so many people being filled with the Holy Spirit? The power of God. But we have tried to streamline the power of God and completely program it out of our worship, our singing, our playing, our instruments, everything. We try to do away with anything that might bring on some kind of emotional fervor. Say amen. I smell your hide burning. Every night I have to beg the sound engineers to turn the juice on the piano. You go to Shakey's Pizza Parlor. You can hear that piano, honey. And it probably came from some Pentecostal church that got rid of it. And they're looking for those kind of pianos. Because they were those old-fashioned Pentecostal pianos had something in them. Of course, now we've got the finest money can buy. But yet, where is the fervor of the excitement of the power? Last evening, a black lady came to me after church, and she said, Dr. Walker, she said, would you be available to come to preach to a black church? I said, I think I could arrange that. She said, now, I must inform you before you come that we shouts. I thought, wouldn't that be marvelous to be in something like that? But the shouting is not the power of God that we need as much as we need the power of God to believe for the cleansing, the purifying, the healing of our members in the church. They sit on our pews. Go ahead. With broken spirits. And you know the devil is a rounder. And he knows totally, completely how to get you all wrapped up and doing it his way. But the power of God should be so fervent when we walk in this building that our minds are completely reprogrammed to have nothing but the moving of the Holy Spirit in our lives, our heart, our soul, our mind, our bodies, that when we leave there, we know we have been plugged in to heaven and heaven into us. Say amen. I don't know why people are afraid of the power of God. I love it. I don't know why people are frightened that somebody might get out of order. In fact, I like a little excitement once in a while. I mean, it causes the adrenaline to begin to flow. But he looks at these 12 men and he says to them, in the very first verse, he said, he called the 12 disciples and gave them power. Now, if he didn't give me power, I'd be jealous. And I'd say, all right, Daddy God, you gave her to Peter. You gave her to those boys back there, and they're no better than I am. I want it too. And we've got it. But we're saving it. We've got it hid. But you let somebody feel a need of all of a sudden touching heaven. It's amazing how some of you saints can touch heaven almost on a 30-second notice. But we ought to live in that realm constantly. The power of the almighty God. I was amused the other night at a fine looking chap. He came to me last night and I mean he's a big bruiser. He was with his lovely little wife. And he said, you know, 
I went everywhere to go to get the Holy Ghost. I have tried everything there is to try to receive it. And he stood back there with my dad and I, and he told us how he had been so hungry with the power of God. And he said, all you did was look at me, and I got it. As you look at that six foot five man laying on the floor, nobody touched him, nobody pushed him. I'm so tired of these spiritual pushers. Say amen. And if some of these spiritual pushers start coming around you and pushing you, quote the scripture, hey, honey, lay no hand on any man, suddenly back off. You think to have the power of God, you've got to have the white right hand quiver. And you've got to mess up somebody's hairdo. Let God run his fingers through their hair, honey, and you leave it alone. Say amen. The other night I was in Florida and a woman came to the whole Brother Walker, I want to pray for you. And before I knew it, she almost run that finger right between my forehead. And I said, excuse me for interrupting your prayer, honey, but your fingernail is hurting my brow. She got upset at me. I don't know why she did. But it killed her prayer. From then on, she stuttered and him hard never to get anything prayed. But neighbor, they didn't go around pushing folks or putting it on. Wherever they went, they were healed by the power of the Almighty God. It was not suggestive. It was not programmed. It wasn't like somebody else had. It was what God had given them. They shared with whomsoever they came in contact. They were healed. Every one of them, the Bible says. The power of God. This is week of consecration here at Lindale. The crowd tonight is tremendous for this church. Tonight is Friday night, double stamps. Target's got their blue light special going on. But yet, there is enough power in this building right now to literally explode and bring a spiritual revolution to Houston, to Texas, to America, that would bring once again the sound of the joy of the Lord being triumphant over our problems, our fears, and our doubts. But we've calmed down and cooled down because we're afraid of what somebody's going to think about us. Uh-huh, come on, somebody. Oh, I wish I had some black saints here to act me on. We're so afraid that somebody might think that we are peculiar. You are. If you belong to God, you're already labeled peculiar, different, strange, odd, weird. And we younger people call it weirdos. You're already labeled. Well, since we're going to carry the label, let's live up to it. Say amen. amen. The power of God. And as long as the power of God has its freedom, it's right away. Men are going to be saved. Men are going to be delivered. Dope addicts are going to be cured. Alcoholics are going to be delivered. Marriages are going to be rebuilt and refilled and renewed and restored. Broken homes are, are going to be reunited when the power of God has its freedom. Honey, you better watch out. The devil is going to run and God is going to meet your needs. They had power with God. He said, I want to tell you something. If you come to a bunch of birds that don't want it, when you leave them, dust off your feet. I feel like shining the bottom of my soul sometimes. Glory. And saying they don't want it. We went to a church not long ago, and the pastor said to me, Now, Jerry, our church is not very emotional. I said, Really? He didn't have to tell me, honey. I could feel it when I walked in. It felt like the first deep freeze touch of the city. Icicles sitting on a pew as big as Mount Everest. And I thought, oh, I'll be glad when the thawing out begins. 
few minutes, Ron Crisler came to the common, the Hammond, and he began to play it. And I began to see some of my icicles shake somebody else's icicle. I looked at the preacher's wife, eyebrows go a little higher than they normally went before she painted them on so thick. I thought it won't be long till the thaw out's going to start. And it wasn't long before that meeting was over. I think it lasted for several weeks. One night I looked on the floor and the main icicle had melted. And there he lay. He tried to get up and he couldn't get up. He had raised up on the right elbow and fall back on the left one. He'd get up on the left elbow and fall back on the right one. And I thought, ha ha, daddy God done socked it to you, buddy. After the meeting was over and he was about sober, about halfway sober, I should say. He said to me, Brother Walker, the thing I've been wanting all of my life, it happened tonight. He said, I've watched everybody else feel something, but tonight I finally felt the power of God in my own life like I've never felt it before. What would some of you do if all of a sudden you felt the current of the power of God run through your body? Honey, it don't give you the right hand tremors. It'll make the left one tremor just like the right one. It won't give you the neck jerk. It'll jerk your whole body. It won't make you pat your right foot and your left one be lame. Honey, they'll both pat the same time in perfect cadence. And honey, if you ever get up on them, you better watch out. You may become a runner or a leaper for Jesus when the power of God hunts you. <laughs> Say amen. But healing... I've been praying for the six since I was four and a half years of age. I have prayed for so many people, I do not have the numbers remembered of how many thousands we have prayed for. But I am praying tonight for the power cells in your spirit to be activated and come alive. Sometimes I feel like my preaching is totally in vain. I've stood on this very platform and preached my very soul out and I felt like it was just thrown out there for no reason at all. But neighbor, I got news for you. If God gives it and I deliver it, I'm no longer responsible but you are. The power of God. The Bible said, and he gave them authority over the devils. You've got that same authority. The only problem is you've got it mixed up. You think he's got it. He has no power unless you give him power. Somebody asked me the other day about a little figure. Well, I'll tell you what kind of figure it was. It was an owl. And I've had that owl for years. When I was in Brother Noah's church, I think in about my seventh revival there, one of the doctor's wives gave me a beautiful owl. And my house guest said, Oh, Brother Walker, don't you know there's a demon in that owl? I said, You're wrong, honey. That owl's been living in my house about 10 years. He's sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, Brother Walker, we were taught that any time we had an image like an owl, it had a devil in it. I said, honey, there ain't nothing in that except, what do you call that white stuff? They make plaster Paris. That's all it is. Aren't you going to throw it away? I said, nope, I like it. It gives me memories. A very great doctor's wife made it and gave it to me because she loved me. 
But Brother Walker, aren't you afraid that it might cause some kind of evil spirit to come in your room? I said, let me tell you something, honey. When I moved in this house, I marked off the territory and I pled the blood of Jesus Christ over the property and the devil cannot cross the bloodline of Jesus. <laughs> Say amen. amen. Neighbor, if you've been bought with a price, and you've been washed with the blood of the Lamb, and you are saved, and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, the devil of hell cannot cross the bloodline of Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. <laughs> Some of you are not responding to that because you've got the devil on your side. But it said he gave them power over the devil. Not the big daddy rabbit. But all of his kin folks along with it, a power over all of them. Brother Walker, I'm so afraid that my bush out in my backyard is taking on an evil spirit. And I'm going to cut it down come spring. Neighbor, you've got authority. And that authority is bush. You may be an holy lander, but I'll tell you something, holy lander. You've got something to new to view. You belong to a Pentecostal Christian, and the devil, nor no bug, no storm, or anything can touch you because I claim you to be God's property. I've got power, authority over the devils. Say amen, baby. Brother Walker, I'm so fearful, bless God. The devil just been giving me a round glory to the Father. But I read to you tonight in the book, honey, he gave them power over the devils. If he so could do it for those in that day, how much greater will he do it today when there are more believers, uh, there are more Christians uh, than ever been recorded in the history of mortal man? Neighbor, power makes power. And you get two or three together with power, honey, and you better watch out. It's some dynamite about to explode. When we go to Florida in a meeting every year, we go to Suncoast Cathedral. And several years ago, we were at Clearwater. And while we're in that meeting, somewhere along in that meeting, we got some Methodist sisters interested. They came to hear Ron sing and play and shout. But something got a hold of them. And they got the power of God. One night, one of these beautiful black sisters come down the aisle doing her thing. You know how the sisters do, don't you, sister? And they sort of, you know, swing it a little out of gear. She come to me and she said, Rev Walker, praise for me. And I looked at this dignified saint, her beautiful black dress, her high heel shoes that were killing her bunions, Her diamond rings she is still making payments on. And I said, God, do it. That's all I said. And she walked away just like some of you folks here at Lindale. Didn't feel a thing. Just like I thought. That's why she's like all the other people. But honey, she got to the back of the church and God saw a landing strip for her. And honey, all of a sudden she became airborne. Rick, you remember it? And sheer feet went out from under her and honey, she flew through the air. And she skidded down the aisle on her face. It never wrinkled her dress. 
It never mustered up. It was in perfect dignity and order. But honey, that dear old Methodist sitter the next night came back with two more to get what she got. Honey, before the meeting was over, we had three Methodist sisters that bound the power of Satan. They prayed every day. Before that meeting was over, every Saturday night, the Methodist church was having an all-night prayer meeting for the Jerry B. Walker crusade. That's what I'm talking about. And every time they come to meet and those three are together, you might as well get ready to have church, honey. They forget about the white folks sitting around them dead. And honey, those three sisters, they begin to mm, and carry on and praise the Lord. They're Methodist. That's been tampered with. They've got the power. And the other night, I was doing the marvelous life of Christ in the great big gigantic Bayfront Center. And all of a sudden as I was reading the program, I thought, oh, they're here. <laughs> and sure enough, they were in the back of the auditorium. They had paid five dollars a piece for tickets to get in. But honey, when the meeting was over, they came to me and said, Brother Walker, we don't know how to tell you this. But when you were down here last year for Jesus 81 with Pat Boone, you stood at the fence one night and prayed for a man that was dying. And Brother Walker, I got news for you. He ain't no longer dying. He has become my husband. Praise the Lord. That's the power of God. Neighbor, you can sit on it. You can try to tie it. You can try to bind it. But one of these days, uh, it's going to break out. And when it does, uh, the Shekinah glory is going to come down. Uh, and you're going to begin to move uh, and shout and praise uh, and magnify and edify the name of Jehovah God. And devils are going to tremble to see you freed uh, from their power and their strength. Say amen. Now, I'm not going to preach tonight. We've got a preacher here from Waco that's going to invite me for revival, I understand. My secretary told me, I'm going anyway. I've called him, but he's been out skiing. But friend, we need to get back to those things where the power of God is very real in church. When I was a little boy, I've told you about Sister Perkins. We got her from the Baptist. They threw her out because she got the Holy Ghost. And they didn't know what to do with us before we had that new name, Cosmetics. I mean, Charismatics. And we got her. And honey, she wore her fur coats and her diamonds. And every time an oil well came in, we were there to pray that it'd be a, a good old-fashioned gully washer. But she had power. But there was another lady in town. Her name was Hogan. No reflection on the Hogan we've got in this church. But her name was Hogan, Sister Hogan. And she didn't get to come very often. But I'd slip up of the organ and say, Mama, they're together tonight. And any time those two women got together, they almost preached the socks off of my daddy. One time my father spoke at general council and daddy took Ma Perkins and Sister Hogan along too. Because when those two old girls got tuned up, honey, the devil took down his sign and his signboard and glory came down because they had power with God. The sisters that used to pray in this church, all they do anymore is grunt and groan and complain. Too hot, too cold. Too loud, not loud enough. It's 
quiet, isn't it? I love you. Not the marrying kind, the real stuff. Why, years ago, if a fortune teller had moved five miles near a church, the sister had got together, honey, and that teller would have to move her uh, table and her marble bowl somewhere else, honey. I was in a revival meeting several years ago here in Houston at another church. And while I was in that meeting, a topless joint moved in half a block down the street, painted those horrible looking creatures on the walls, just so embarrassing. You know what the sisters of that church did? They went over and prayed, and just a few days it went out of business. And from that day to this, nothing has ever succeeded in that piece of property. They had power. They had power. Why, we've got a fortune teller right across the street on the corner. We ought to be claiming that piece of property for our own church as a parking lot. We can mow those buildings down and they can see us all the way from 45 that way. Say amen. <laughs> Say amen. Well, I'm over here preaching my soul away to you uh, and telling you about the power of God. She's over there making money, telling somebody about the fortune. Honey, there ain't nobody can tell you about your future. There's only one man that knows your future. His name is Jehovah, Jehovah God, and he has it under control. Now, I'm not going to preach. I'm just going to keep visiting with you. The power of God. The power of God. Neighbor, we received a call yesterday. It was so sad. I worried about it. I prayed about it. I've been praying about it today. I even called another friend to ask me to help me to pray about it. We know a church that has 90 members, men members who are out of work. But neighbor, there was a day that the women and the saints of God had so much power with God. Honey, they could pray and work where there was no work. Power. Now I'm going to lay something on you, honey. Get ready. We are coming to a juncture in our relationship with God. Either we're going to get in or we're going to get out. We're going to see results or we're going to deny what we've seen in the past. And it may That prayer will become the most popular thing of your household. They had power with God. I look at a man who was a rascal. I look at a man with an uncontrollable temper. Oh, he was saved, but he had problems. And maybe that's just the reason my Lord loved him so much. Because he saw the end results. And I can see my Lord walking along beside that man that was a fisherman. <laughs> and my older brother said, yeah, he may have a temper he may have a foul mouth. He may speak when he ought to be quiet. But when I give birth to my first church in Jerusalem, I want him to be the senior pastor. Look at him. A simple fisherman. All he was. But when his partner went along, he almost sank the ship because he caught so many fish. He was sort of proud like some of we Pentecostals. Why, he was in a group one day and they said, aren't you one of those Lindaleites? Oh, no, 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 not me. 
Don't you go to Keyhands Church? I mean, Keyhands Church? Oh, oh, oh no, not, not, not me. I, I work at Bell Telephone. Oh, no, I work for IBM. And that woman said, man, I know who you are. You're one of them full gospel businessmen that's got cold. Oh, I don't know anything about it. Can't you see that prissy dude denying that he was a follower of Jesus? But all of a sudden, he was scared to death for his life because he knew he was already identified as one of those Jesus followers. And he got a little group together in an upper room. And they began to fast and pray and got everything in order. And suddenly a rushing mighty wind from heaven began to shake the building uh, and vibrate the stones. Uh, and honey, all of a sudden, uh, the people around began to speak in strange language. Uh, but I noticed that one old boy named Peter was over there sitting in that chair and thinking, hmm, not me. <laughs> no, I'm not going to be emotional like this. Uh, no, I, I, I went to Rice University. <laughs> and you never, no, Lord, mm, Lord, Lord, move on over there to other sister over there. Praise God. Don't bother me, God. Oh, God, I feel it coming on. Honey, when he felt it come on, it came on, and he was filled with power from on high. And honey, I believe he shouted, he danced, he carried on because he received power. Look at him from then on. Honey, he became the pastor of the first church. One of his elders in the church got to farming around with a piece of property. And honey, that man fell dead. An hour later, the pastor had to bury his wife because she knew what was going on. And kept it secret. Oh, I wish some of that would start going on in the church. Oh, Lord have mercy. I feel like preaching black. Come on, somebody. Somebody pray for me. I'm talking about the power of God, not only to heal, but to deliver, to control the powers of the enemy. Honey, we have power to control our atmosphere about us. Neighbor, no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. When you begin to release that power that's in your soul, it's the Holy Ghost. And honey, there is power in the Holy Ghost. Look at this same man. The news got out. And honey, if you want the juice vine to get juicy, you let the power of God start breaking out. I understand there's a lot of gossip going on about Lindale this week here in the city. Of the church saying, what happened? That meeting wasn't scheduled. We didn't have time to get an advantage before they got him. What's going on? Honey, the power of God began to move, and we just said, God, go ahead and move, and we'll be right there to move along with you, honey. And next week will be the third week of the meeting. <laughs> week is only going to be three nights. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost nights. But look at Peter. The pastor of the first church. I mean, can't you see a pastor today saying, man, 5,000 joined church Sunday? Well, he'd be the biggest daddy rabbit in town. But the news got out about what was going on in that church. And the Bible says they got the sick. The lame, the halt, the blind, the deaf, the dumb. And then it says, Popo, they got those that were vexed with unclean spirits. <laughs> I feel it coming on. And they laid them in the streets. And one sister was healed as he passed by. See, that's how much you know about it. You're saying, that's right, amen. Bless God. That's good, Brother Walker. Preach it, bless the Lord. He didn't say one sister was healed. It said every one of them were made whole. 
as he passed by. The power of God. They had it. Because he gave it to them. For those he came in contact with. There's a church in Seoul, Korea with 110,000 members. On Sunday morning they have six services. And people fight. Almost as it were to get in. And when one service is over, they make everybody exit out the front doors. And while they're exiting, a new audience comes in and fills the audience in less than five minutes. But you know why? They have what they call prayer meetings. Not gossip sessions. Not going over somebody's house and get fritos and cheese dip. Hot chocolate. Honey, they get together without the treats of cheese dip, potato chips, and heartburn later. And they have prayer. And I was asked the other day, Jerry, would you come to a mountain on the outskirts of Seoul, Korea? And pray for the sick. I said, Pastor, what would I do? I don't want to go to a prayer mountain and pray for the sick and preach out there in the open air. He said, Oh, they just finished a 10,000 seat auditorium on the mountain. And he said, You will have that many and more every night just to pray for. 10,000. Prayer warriors. And one of those sisters, a brother gets sick, you know what they do? They put him under the power spell of prayer. I can see our beloved pastor. You'll not find a better pastor anywhere in the world than our pastor at this church. He's a godly man. And Sunday morning, he will have a total different audience than I have tonight. The Sunday morning crowd will come. That's his crowd. And your holiness, Father McKeehan, if Sunday morning you would say to that Sunday morning crowd, now children, Daddy Rabbit's been to the mountain. And I've never told you this. Since that big hand began to point at you. Honey, when that hand points, you've been pointed at And he'll bend over like this and point that finger. And he said, God's called me to call every one of you Sunday morning lilies. To fasting and praying. And I'd get up here Sunday night with a Sunday night crowd, shift number two. And I'd say the same thing to them. Do you know that we would almost have zero response? It's quiet, isn't it? But we're coming to that moment in life that our guns, our burglar alarms, our bars over windows will not keep away the intruder. But I got news for you. There is something that will keep it away. It's the power, the invisible force of the almighty God. I am so convinced. Last night a university student came and said, Brother Walker, During this week, would you tell the story of how God saved your life on a highway? I said, which one? I was in Dallas in a meeting. I'd been gone from home for several months. I was tired. 
I said, I'm going to go home tonight. I don't want to live 194 miles from here. And there was a red light. Only one between Dallas and Austin. It happened to be in Waco. And on one side, they have a big furniture factory that builds church pews. On the other side was a rubber company that made tires for motor cars. A man got in the back seat. He said, I'm going to kill you if you don't do what I say to do. When he told me to drive, honey, I drove. I didn't have time to call the prayer tower. I didn't have time to call McKeehan or Noah. But under my breath, I said, Jesus, were you scared? You better believe it. Were you nervous? I don't remember. I was so shook up. I look at that big white cloud speedometer and it was doing a hundred miles an hour. That man said, I've killed two people today and you're going to be my third one. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Honey, I didn't talk in tongues. I didn't have time to call a charismatic prayer group. And I thought, God, where are you? God, have you forsaken me? I don't want to die with my head cut off. He said, I've stuffed two people in a well today. 105 miles an hour. I looked for the man. They were all at Denny's. And all of a sudden I realized that I had power. For greater is he that is in me, not the man in the back seat, but the guy that's in here. The third time I said, Jesus. I didn't stutter. I didn't slur it. Honey, I said it with authority. And all of a sudden heaven stopped and said, hey, that's Jerry B down there in a mess. We don't have need of him up here yet. Lord, have mercy. We got to get him down there to go to Lindale and stir up those dead saints. He's got to go down there and help Pastor McKeehan. And all of a sudden, I'll not tell you the whole story. But honey, the power of God hit me. Boom! And I began to laugh. In the Holy Ghost. And when I'd catch my breath, I'd come up and say, Jesus, ha, 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 glory. You thought I was at some spiritual retreat. And all of a sudden, that man took away that cold piece of steel he had laying on my neck. And he buried his thumbs into my shoulder blades and began to shake me and said, Let me out of here before you kill both of us. That's the power of God. You call it supernatural, it may be, but honey, whatever you want to call it, I'll tell you what it is. It's nothing but the triune power of the throne room of glory. When the redeemed of the Lord shall say so, the devils tremble, angels take authority, and neighbor, the enemy begin to move, the walls begin to tumble, the storm ceases to be, the billows become smooth, because when God is fire, who can be against you when the power of God is in your life? I'm not going to preach. Daisy finally got here and we'll have a song after a while. Maybe. But friend, God is God. I don't know the future. I don't know the tomorrow. I don't know around the bend. But I've got a new slogan. I can say it so cloud and so clear. But God. Glory. God that's all I need honey 
It's better than a Saturday night special on your hip that might blow up on your hip. Honey, it's better than a 45 pistol in your hip. When you got the power of God, honey, the devils are going to tremble. They're going to run. They're going to make holes through buildings where there's no holes. They're going to make avenues where there's no avenues. When God is on your side, honey, the devil is already defeated. He's bound. He's tied. He's fettered. He's yoked. Because God is going to see his children through, saith the Lord. Lord power with God and he gave them power he gave them power and wherever they went they were healed We have the title. We have the portfolio. We have the credentials. We have the diplomas. And our office walls glisten with that little gold seal of some college. But neighbor, those things do not bring you into communion with God's power. It takes a consecrated, separated, yielded, surrendered life to Jesus Christ. And it will give you authority with power. audience you're coming to the place where you're going to have to choose the choice will not be difficult if you love Jesus but the choice is coming live or die life or death sink or swim God are the world. But for me and my house, I've chosen God. And when you get God where He ought to be in your life, it'll clean up your act. And you'll be where you ought to be at the right time. Amen. He gave them power. Holy Spirit, I feel your presence. I feel that heavenly world as it gives the visitation to hearts in this audience. I realize and I comprehend ever, ever, ever so well that your spirit is drawing men from their lives of carnality their lives of lustful temptations and you're bringing them to a knowledge that they must walk with you Father when this day is finished and the midnight hour is chimed ever so loud and so clear. And the ledges of glory are closed for January 8 in our Lord's year 1982. I would like to be in that computer these words on this day in time thousands of miles away in a beautiful church on a corner with its high lofty steeple reaching toward heaven there was an audience of about 800 to 1000 people tonight 
that ask to be endued with power. And then I read that line in that great chapter. And my father granted that wish. And those saints had a new anointing. A new dimension of faith. Men made consecrations to live for my father. Lord Jesus, it's not my imagination praying this prayer. It's not a prayer of fantasizing, but God, I want it to be a reality. That this audience will desire to be endued with your power. Holy Spirit, every head is bowed and every eye is closed. And reverently, while you bow your heads and close your eyes, I'm going to ask you to stand with your heads bowed and your eyes closed all over the audience. Held, you've had it your way long enough. Thou hast struggled in thine own ability. And thou hast resisted. And thou hast ran to and fro. But yea, this night I speak to thee. I desire to give you a marvelous gift. And that gift I shall give to thee shall also include a bonus. I shall save your soul. And I will give you power. And you shall have authority over your enemies. If you will step forth and come unto me, I will give you my gift of salvation and the abundance of my spirit. I call you to repentance, saith the Lord. Every head is bowed. People are already coming to the altar. I haven't even given the invitation yet, but people are coming from all over the auditorium.